All right, welcome to Intimate Talk with Dr. Tulu. And uh, um, it's so good to be here again tonight. And uh, thank you guys for joining me wherever you are um, in all over the world, wherever you are tonight, watching or listening to Intimate Talk with Dr. Tulu. Um, it is my pleasure to have you on this show tonight. And I'm glad that you guys are joining me. And of course, I want to start by saying, I mean, by saying thank you to you guys for all your support, really. Um, your calls, your, I mean, I was going through, I, I mean, I'm not so good with Twitter. And today, as summer, I tried to go through my Twitter page and I noticed a lot of activities has been going on there. And of course, I'm learning, actually. I'm learning to, I think this Twitter thing, maybe, uh, anyway. So, of course, I saw some of your comments and I even saw some comments on other platforms where people are saying, listen to Intimate Talk with Dr. Tulu. And of course, um, Knowing that I'm making impact, knowing that I'm doing something, it's 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 the best. I mean, um, I mean the best kind of fulfillment that I can ever have. And and, and I really want to thank you guys for giving me the opportunity to do this. It's not easy doing this. Take it from me, doing this is not easy at all. Because I mean, talking about sex in an environment where even in even in developed. Uh, environment where people see talk about me uh, free to some extent talking about sex is still restrict I me mean, still uh, people still shy away from me not to talk about uh, I mean a place like ours a country like ours where everybody tries to pretend and try to you know manage their life and you know people live in sadness and depression and would rather continue living like that then then come out and let people understand whom they are or what they are going through all right so um so doing this it's not been easy really but it, it is the best kind of fulfillment i can ever have really you guys have been so 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 amazing your support has been so overwhelming and really i i, I can't overemphasize i mean it's not it's it's not so much about me wanting to do this. It is a whole lot about you guys wanting me to also be part of your life. When you talk about the kind of uh, um, the kind of um, issues I talk about on these shows, are issues are very intimate, they are very deep, they are close to people's hearts. You guys giving me an opportunity to be part of that is something serious, and I don't take it lightly. That's why most uh, most time I say this, people think Dr. Tolu is too spiritual or getting religious when i tell you that for me this is a calling is i mean this is a passion but beyond passion it is a calling for me all right thank you guys for um allowing me to do this really and on that note i'm going to be starting tonight's episode and of course i want to encourage those of you that are listening to me if you have something you want to do if there is a burden in your heart to go out and do something please just touch where you are. I mean, social media made it so easy for you to do whatever you want to do. People wake up in few weeks, they become celebrities and all that. You don't have an excuse, really. Whatever it is, I don't want you to complain about money. Just touch wherever you are. If it's tonight, pick up your phone, that little phone in your hand. Create a page. Create a group for that thought in your mind for that thing you want to do and just keep putting your thought even if nobody is liking even if nobody is talking just keep putting your thoughts your plans your you know sometimes when you put all these things down you can go back there and read them as they are coming to your head put them down i really want to encourage you the world needs you the society needs you there are a lot of areas in nigeria that we are lagging behind i, I was talking to someone today that the field of counseling is more than 200 i mean there are so many there are different different areas of counseling you could cover a niche for yourself and i don't think nigeria is even scratching the surface i've said that a lot on this program talking about grief and bereavement talking about child counseling teenage counseling sex therapy or sex counseling marriage um crisis the field is massive anxiety depression uh anger 
I mean, you, you hear some spe some specialized field of counseling, you will be wondering, you know, some very, you know, specialized niche in counseling. So the field is massive. And even if your own is not counseling, but the point is, whatever it is that you know you do effortlessly, where you know something you know that you do that is going to affect other people's life positively, the burden is, is in your heart to launch out. You don't have an excuse. I don't want to hear yeah, my husband is not letting me, my wife is not letting me, money is not letting me. They could be a very good excuse, but come on. If your passion is strong enough, something is going to happen. Stand up and do something. Just start tonight as you are listening to me. Start right where you are. And it's on that note, I will be starting tonight's episode of Intimate Talk with Dr. Tolu. My name is Dr. Tolu. I'm a clinical relationship, a married counselor. I'm a sex therapist, and I am a matchmaker. My job is just to make sure you are living your life to the fullest. I want to make sure every aspect of your life is doing well. And I want to be sure that, I mean, sex it's i mean i understand how crucial it is and i understand how private it could be and how much we don't want to talk about it in this part of the world and because of that i talk about it a lot to make sure that this area that everybody is quiet about dr tolu can help you to you know open up a little bit in that aspect and it's on that note i'm going to be talking about a very nice topic that i put together for you tonight and i think you're going to enjoy i titled it why you are in a sexless marriage why you are in a sexless marriage i think a lot of people are in this category tonight a lot of people are in this situation a lot of people are battling with this you're you are in you've been married i mean i've seen three months i've seen six months i've seen one year three years six years seven years ten years i've actually seen 11 years 11 years of marriage without sex it could be that bad all right so if, if your own is just one month or two months and you are complaining come on i have seen 11 years and i'm not exaggerating life i've seen 11 years so you should be grateful for your three months or six months that you've been baffling with no sex but i mean it's not right it's not supposed to be so it is your right to enjoy sex it is your it is it is sex is beautiful i mean i used to say it on this show a lot of time that it is the gift of god for you it is your it is your right to enjoy sex it is your right to have the best of it hurt spicy interesting delicious sex it is your right you deserve it and it's good it's interesting i've talked about the benefits of sex in this on me on this show and i don't want to be going into all that if you if you are not having sex of course you are denying yourself a lot of goodies a lot of good things really so tonight on this show i just and funny enough, it's pathetic. You know, this might look, I mean, it's not a joke. People know that I don't joke on this show. It's serious business. You understand? So, um, it's pathetic if you have seen people who are in a sexless marriage, if you see what they are going through, you will understand how bad this could be. It's, it, it, I mean, some, someone says, um, um, I mean, there's this quote about the fact that, um, uh, I can't remember but the point what he's saying is you know sex becomes a problem when you want to if, if you have seen it i can't remember but the point is if you are seen if you're having sex you don't even sometimes you might even get bored you are even tired i don't want it no leave me alone me you could be fighting about it but it is when you want it and you can't get it that it becomes a problem it becomes a problem when you want it and you can't get it and i don't you don't want to know what people are going through when people want to make love i say it a lot of time that men's sexuality is, is is attached to their ego and uh, men's sexuality are attached to their ego and female to their emotions you know so um as much as possible we are still different men and women are not the same uh, no, no. i'm not diving into the feminism stuff but i'm talking uh, Muna, i'm talking um the chemistry we, we still react differently we still uh our body is wired differently and that is why you understand that sex is very very so powerful that some people might never be themselves if their sex life is doing badly academically spiritually financially materially in their place of 
work in their uh, efficiency everything is getting bad because sex is bad and it could be that bad people become sad depressed you know because their sex life is doing badly some people might be saying how oh, is it food is i mean i get that a lot of time of course i mean people are entitled to their opinion but i've seen i've seen couples who are struggling to have sex and, and couldn't i've seen the pains i've seen the the struggle i've seen how bad you know it, it, it is and how, how terrible their life became just because of that so it's on that note i will be talking on this topic i will rush through it tonight really i don't want to take this so they are not thursday i'm going to be telling you how to come out of a sexless marriage so tonight if you are listening to me you are battling with this your sex has taken the i mean sex has taken the backstage in your marriage and your bedroom has become a bedroom where you have okay you don't even negotiate now because, I mean, there's actually nothing to negotiate about. There's no sex at all. You want to join me tonight. You want to follow me on this topic. And I'm very sure you're going to enjoy it. All right. So I'm going to be starting with this song. All right. That was Boys to Men. I'll make love to you. And of course, tonight I'm talking about why you are in a sexless marriage. And of course, on Thursday, I'm going to be talking about how to come out of, sex, of a sexless marriage. So if you are in that situation, I know a whole lot, a whole lot of people are in this situation. There is no doubt about it. In fact, if I said about, about I mean, the, the most of the marital issues that couples are going through in Nigeria today, if I tell you that about 95% are sexually related, are sex related, I won't be far from the truth. Considering what I have seen, considering what people are sending to me, considering the kind of, I mean, the cases, if I consider the number of marital cases I'm dealing with, I will tell you that might in fact even those that are that are not about sex are people who just want to i mean use you know um other issues to cover it up you know sometimes you know uh <laughs> that's why i don't envy you know pastors when people go to their pastor to talk about marital issues you find out that you know the man will keep asking them what's the problem you see the man saying this woman she's very wicked she's very wicked and the man will be like what did she do you know the only thing you keep hearing is she's very wicked even if it's a woman ah my husband is a wicked man my what did he do nobody want to talk when it comes to sex you know you just find out that all those talk all this she's wicked i don't want again I, i'm not doing again find out what is the cause of the problem at the background you find out that it's, it's sex all right so i won't be far from the truth if i tell you that most 90 about 95 percent of the issues that people are going through in their marriage marriage is sex related and of course like i said couples these days six years seven years 11 years <laughs> no sex it's terrible all right and you know it's very easy to conclude for me actually probably because of what i have been seeing it is very easy to conclude that women are the ones that are suffering when it comes to sex but these days men the tables are turning and like i said your wife is no longer like your great grandmother in fact she's not like your mom she want to enjoy sex she have better understanding of whom she is she she knows her right you know exposure and um um uh, what do i call it um education a lot of things you know access to information is making women to be more aware and of course you know so these days i i can't tell you categorically that a lot of men are going through hell in their marriage when it comes to sex a lot of men are going through a lot of pains really okay so and like i said you know, because men's sexuality is attached to their ego, the thought of the fact that a man feels like he, he can't make love to his wife, and the thought of another man doing what he cannot do could drive a man crazy. There is nothing as crazy as a man thinking, I can't make love to her, and probably she's going to go out and get it from someone else. The man could go gaga just because of that, all right? So it, it could actually make a man, it, it could make uh, a man to be incapacitated physically, mentally, you know, name it, because 
if he has the thought of someone doing what he cannot do. All right, these days men go extra mile. Men go, you know, men are going extra mile just to, to increase their libido. I don't get it. As in, ha. The, I mean, rub it, take it, bathe with this soap, rub this cream, swallow this. Man, come on. <laughs> it's so much. <laughs> it's so crazy these days what men are going through to just make sure they're able to live up to expectation. All right? There are sexual sim stimulants all over the place. And men are buying this thing. And they are not just buying it just because they want to have sex. It is majorly about proving their worth to the women. All right? And of course, women are not left behind. The talk, sex toy business is booming in Nigeria. You know, funny enough, you, you, you wonder what is going on. Nigerians are so holy, you know. We are so religious. We are so... But sex toy is booming. I think I'm going to be talking about sex toys one of these days. <laughs> it's going to be very controversial. Maybe I'm going to pick it as, as a topic and I'm going to analyze it. But forget it. Some of you men that are listening to me, I'm sorry to tell you, that, that <laughs> when when you are sleeping, <laughs> your wife might be using a dildo. And of course, you know, I saw a quote tonight on social media. The person says, um, um, the only reason, uh, I, I wish I could, let me, let me look for it. I, I just saw it as I was coming and I was like, what? What? You know, and the person says, okay, yeah. He said, the reasons why men are still important to some, some of those ladies is because vibrators cannot buy drinks and pepper soup and airtime. Guys, are you following? Is <laughs> because the vibrator and the dildo cannot buy pepper soup and airtime. <laughs> that is why some girls are still following some men. And those those are things that men doesn't want to hear at all. You know, men feel men don't want to hear stuff like that because they feel like what I'm capable, I can do this, all right. And of course, you know, cheating used to be a man thing, you know, in those days. It's all about men cheating, you know. It's an abomination for a woman to cheat. But forget it. The tables are turning. Like I say, women are, are beating the men to eat these days. Women want to enjoy sex. So there's nothing like, you are not giving it to me. I'm sitting down there. I'm crying. Whether you want to like it or not, whether you like it, what I'm saying or not, but it's a reality on ground. Women are beating men to eat because women will do anything to get their desired satisfaction. I say it a lot of time. Stop shying away from the truth. A sexually frustrated woman will eventually, eventually frustrate the marriage, all right? So all these things, you know, all these things, um, and of course, expecting a sexless marriage to survive is like expecting a plant to survive without water. That's the truth. What is marriage without sex? You don't like to hear that, but it's a fact. You expect a marriage without sex to survive? Expect the plants to grow and survive without water, all right? So because of all this pressure of uh, 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 how do, what do you do and how do you solve, how do you fix the sexual issues and all that, is mounting a lot of pressure on men, really, these days. And of course, so if you are listening to me, let me just take it like that. On Thursday, I'm going to be talking about how to come out of sexless marriage. But let me run through it you know, for the next 20 minutes. Because, I mean, I'm, I'm worried about not being able to pick calls on this show. I'm actually worried. Because I noticed that most of I me, mean, people are really complaining, Dr. Tolu, you are not picking my calls. But that's what, that was why I decided to make, um, you know, every last episode of this show to make it an open mic one so that everybody could come out you know and ask their question but i noticed that i mean that seems not to be enough so i want to try as much as possible to be picking your call so tonight why 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 are you in a sexless marriage what is going on why is it that you can't make love one month two months three months one year two years i mean i've seen a, a whole lot of this and you don't want to know it's only the people that are I've seen couples, you know, call, you know, call Dr. Tolu and, you know, they call me, they, you see the two of them crying, weeping, you know, we don't know what to do. And I know there are a lot of couples that are out there every time you want to make love to yourself and it's like the thing is not working. You are holding yourself, you are crying, you are weeping, what are we going to do? And, you know, some of you have given up, some of you are sad, some of you are depressed, whatever it is. Why, why, why did you, how did you get to this level? 
what are the things that could be res responsible number one is your is all resolved family issues you know when there are issues that are piling up in your marriage and no one is talking about it or you, you you are sweeping it under the carpet or you are keeping malice you know you, you just imagine when you are you you don't talk to each other for one week i mean there are couples i see them and i wonder you don't talk to each other in your own house one week two weeks three weeks one month for crying out loud where is the love how are you going to have sex if you are not talking to each other for one month for two months for crying out loud you stay in the same house and you want to have sex and you are not talking to each other it's not going to work so one of the reasons why your marriage is sexless is because of unresolved issues especially for women whose sexuality is attached to their emotion unforgiveness might actually lead to resentment and loss of interest in sex resentment because of piled up issues whatever is the cause whether it's money whether it's um, cheating whether it's anger whether it's communication problem whether it's children issue whatever is causing the problem if you don't sit down and resolve it your marriage is going to turn sexless because you keep you there is going to be resentment you're going to you don't want to you can't flow with each other and in fact most of the time you know this sex thing that's why i say it a lot of times i say erection is a bastard i say i think that's that should be a topic really instead of making it erectile dysfunction maybe i should make that a topic erection is a bastard <laughs> you know if if you know there is have you noticed some of some of you couples must have noticed that that if, if there is a kind of you know disconnection between you as a couple whenever you want to make love you find especially for couples who are very close you find out that you you can't you can't even sustain the erection you can't get the erection because you are not feeling the connection you are not feeling connected in your heart it's very common with couples and of course for the women you know because you're also feeling you know emotionally detached you can't easily get wet all right so your marriage could turn sexless if you have issues and you're not resolving that is why most of the time when people call for sex therapy i most of the time i want to find out you know i want to separate the sex and separate the issues now most of the time you be, you see that if you solve the issues the sex will just fall in place without even much problem without much issues the sex will fall in place so sometimes or most time actually the issues are the problem why your marriage is becoming sexless if you solve your issues you just see that your marriage your sex is flowing back all right so why you are in a sexless marriage could be because of unresolved issues number two because life get busy you know when you don't spend like time together anymore probably the man is working at night the woman is working during the day or the man is so busy today she's in law is in london next week is in america and uh, next two weeks is in is in calabar is in protocol is everywhere or she is so busy she's in um a management sitting in a meeting in abuja tomorrow uh, before you know it, she's off to to canada you know before you know it you're going to drift after apart if you don't create time for sexual uh um um it's or whatever with yourself and your life gets so busy and that is very very common in nigeria very common you know because we are always after money 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 everything is about money you make the money at the end of the day is you, you are you're already a carcass you know so i mean what are we talking about when your life gets so busy forget it your marriage becomes sexless if care is not taken sex takes the backstage number three boredom now it is the truth that age and familiarity <laughs> you know could make couple to lose the spark in the bedroom you know it, it, there is no two way about it that couples could actually get bored after spending some years together all right and then of course the initial sexual arousal and excitement you know the the you know the giz 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 might actually diminish after some time that could be another reason why your marriage is sexless and of course don't worry on thursdays i will be on thursday i will be telling you how to come out of this you know sexless marriage all right boredom you could get bored very and that is very very common with couples in nigeria 
People get bored in marriage and they are looking for excitement outside. Really, if there is only reason, if, if the reason why you are cheating is because you are bored, <laughs> there is a problem. Of course, because at the end of the day, you are going to get hurt because the cheating is not going to supply the excitement you are looking for. After some time, you get bored. Actually, I mean, there is. <laughs> Let me go there. <laughs> You are going to also get bored in that your cheating escapade. That's the truth. Okay? So, brother, that could be the reason why your marriage is becoming sexless. The man is not seeing anything exciting. I mean, the boobs, I've been seeing it for 10 years. I've been seeing everything for 20 years. Also exciting about it, all right? It could be bored. It could get boring. Marriage could get boring. Payback. Okay? It's very common with female folks. You know, women you, who use sex as a weapon... Of welfare might be pushing for a sexless marriage unknowingly. All right, you just think that the only weapon I have to fight back is sex. All right. Now, if every time you want to get back at your husband is very common with women, but men are actually doing it. If every time you want to get back at him, what you are using as your weapon, the only thing you know is it's is sex. You know, women believe that. Ah, uh -uh. <laughs> you meet me there now. You know, it's very very common. And when that begins to happen and the man keep begging and keep begging after some time, he's going to get tired of begging, you know. So stop using, anyway, stop using um, um, uh, sex as a weapon. So if you use it and you are always using it as a payback, like, okay, you will meet me there. Okay, you did this and I'm going to have sex for you, with you. You did this for me, there's going to be no sex. Before you know it, it becomes an habit. And then before you know it, you gradually start slipping into a sexless marriage. Number five is illness and reaction to drugs. Of course, there are some drugs that could make you not to want to have sex that could reduce your uh, interest in sex. Let me put it that way in a simple way. And of course, of course, there are some uh, sickness, you know, that could, I mean, reaction to certain drugs like depression, you know, if you are treating depression and certain drugs, you know, that you start losing your uh, sexual excitement because of that. And then my number six is incompatible sexual libido, incompatible sexual libido, all right? You could actually sleep into a sexless marriage if you are not compatible sexually. That is why we keep saying, please talk to a sex therapist before you get married go for proper pre-marriage counseling this is so common very very common very very common especially among those that are very religious sexual incompatibility people you are because as soon as you get married you keep struggling and you keep struggling after some time you get tired of struggle struggling and you you start gradually you are walking into a sexless marriage and then number seven is what I call power struggle. I am not going to be the one to make the first move. Who is going to make the first move? I've been, you know, this one is saying I'm not going to. I, I don't get it, really. As in, why Why is making the first move? I'm tired of hearing this, I mean, among couples. Why is making the first move such a big deal? Make kids. I mean, if you want it as a woman, if it's, even if he's sleeping, remove the trouser. And I mean, if you want it, Sit on top when is the man is still sleeping. I mean, it's your husband. You don't have alternative. And then you say, no, ha, he's going to, I can't be that. He will think I'm cheap. Ah, come on. Women don't understand that every man, every man, forget the pretense, forget the only, only attitude. Every man wants a freak in the bedroom and a lady in the streets. Forget it. That is whom, that is the way they are. All right? So, when there is power struggle, I'm not going to make the first move. The person that is always making the first move is going to get tired of making it. And then before you know it, nobody is talking. Nobody is asking for it. And gradually, it's turning to a week. It's turning to two weeks. It's turning to months. And it's turning to years. And then excessive stress. That's my number eight. Excessive stress. <laughs> that one is Nigeria trouble. <laughs> As in, I close from work. I mean, it's better now. You know, before this roundabout, it used to be very bad. You know, on the island, as in, I clo sometimes I close for, from work by 4, I get home 11, 12. As in, <laughs> how will I be able, I mean, how will somebody be, I, I just, I mean, I just, if I don't know, 
if my husband was in Lagos, maybe all those period, I don't think it will be easy because I, I won't even be able to like, I mean, spend like four or five hours in traffic and then I will get home. I don't even want to eat. I'm so tired. I can't, I'm just looking for maybe conflicts or something. I just want to just take something and just crash. And then somebody will stretch his hand. <laughs> I don't think I will be able to cope, even as a sex therapist. Underst even with all the understanding of this thing that I have, I'm not sure. Stress is killing my sex. It's, it's killing sex, <laughs> even in, especially in Lagos. <laughs> Man, the traffic. And then, you know, the struggle to make ends meet. You know, you struggle for this, you struggle for that excessive stress might make you because every time you are coming back home you are getting home you are tired i'm tired i'm tired i don't want to do anything even the man is looking at your face and it's really like if you are no good let me ask <laughs> or the woman is even feeling like i want it but this man is so tired i can't do anything okay if care is not taken stress is going to take over your sex life from you and then you are going to gradually working or sleeping into a sexless marriage and of course inability to talk about sex very very common i don't understand why are you so shy couples see after listening to dr tolu tonight i just need you guys to open up please if that is the only thing you could give from tonight's topic so by the time i come back on thursday to now tell you about how to work out of these things you might have been able to even talk about it and you know it, it might become very easy for you all right so as in inability to talk about sex couples do you have alternative do you as in <laughs> there's an adage in yoruba you know that says um uh you know my dad used to talk in my my dad talking with proverbs it doesn't every word my dad speaks he speaks in proverb so i'm very good with that but i'm trying to remember this one and maybe how to translate it okay dead body cannot hide for the person that is going to bait for him okay that's it you are it's, if, you're, if somebody is dead i mean when you are going to bait for the person you can't you, you can't raise your hand and say you want to hide for the person that's going to bait for you so that's the way it is with couples the two of you there's nothing to be ashamed of there's nothing to be running away from sit down and talk about it babe this is the way i want you to touch me this couples cannot say it to oh, in nigeria i don't know <laughs> touch me here do it like this i love this style you know, I love, oh, I enjoyed it. I'm some people, I, I, I love it when you touch me like this. I like this style. And some people, you know, for 10 years, same, same style, same style. And it is probably the style that is comfortable for the man. Most of the time, I mean, I get this a lot from women. It is style that is comfortable for the man. That's the only style he enjoys. So he doesn't care about the style the woman is enjoying. Every time, the same style, because that's your comfortable position. All right? Inability to talk about sex. How you enjoying it? When you make, we are making love, you talk. Babe, I, I think I prefer it this way. Can we change position? Can we do it like this? Or even if you are not talking, I mean, dramatize it, or how do I put it? show it if you can't say it inability to talk about it you are dying in silence you are not enjoying sex and you are keeping quiet you are making mm, mm, mm. the man is not even looking at your face all right talk about it men talk to your wife about sex number 10 distraction from kids like i, I have to finish this really distraction from kids <laughs> part of the reason some some women will say ah no my i'm even with some men my daughter we Especially those of you that are, you know, you know the um, uh, what's what's this call, the um, um, Electra, yeah, in 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 counseling, the Electra complex and the Oedipus, Oedipus and Electra complex. All right, the complex, you know, that make a female child to be attached to the father and a male child to be attached to the mother it's called oedipus and electoral complex in counseling is deep and is an interesting topic in counseling but the point is 
when, when your kids, when you're at that stage and your kids are so attached to you, you don't want to let go. My daughter must sleep between us. So my son must sleep on a wall bed. Oh, you know, and, and that's that's what you do. And sometimes you, you can't even organize yourself. You can't. So when, when the kids are coming, <laughs> for couples, I've seen a whole lot of couples who are having issues with their sex life. Their sex life is zero. And you find out they are married. They've been married for five years. And they are having four kids. As in, I ask them, where is the sex going to come out of all this? I mean, your life shouldn't be about having children for crying out loud. You don't get married just because you want to have kids. They are beautiful gifts and gifts and everybody desires to have children. And it is the joy of mother, I mean, of parenthood, it is the joy of marriage to have kids. But come on, that is not the only reason why you are getting married. You get married, and in three years, you already have three kids. <laughs> Where is the sex going to come out from in that place? Distraction from kids, pregnancy, um, um, the issues that come with pregnancy, the taking care of the kids after they are born, and even when they are growing up, the attachment to the parent, the children cannot stay in their room, and all that. You, you, you know, you can't maintain a room for your child before you know it, it becomes an habit, and you are noticing that one month, two months, three months, six months, you are not having sex just because of your children. That's another reason why you could be moving into a sexless marriage, distraction from kids. One more. It's like I can't finish this. Eleven. My number eleven is cultural and religious background. This is massive. This is massive. This is where most of the problems are. Now, in, in uh, there is there is um there's something um you know in anyway. Let me not go into all that. But the point is, you are whom you are. You are, I'm not just Dr. Tolu. It's difficult for me to change at this point if I don't make up my mind to work on myself. I am who I am based on the kind of exposure, the training, the exposure, I mean, the kind of exposure I, I was uh, exposed to or the kind of training I got when I was growing up. The same thing with everybody. You, The way you act it's as a result of your cultural background, your religious background, your your upbringing, the way your parent trained you when you are growing up. And most of the time, it is their value they inculcate into you. They made you whom they want you to be. All right? And you can hardly separate yourself from that. All right? Your cultural and religious background. People who, I mean, I read a whole lot about this today, you know. I was just reading through the impact of culture and religion on sexuality. Men, I think it's, some, it's something I should take as a topic. It's going to be very, very controversial, but I think I should take it as a topic. Because most people... In their head, sex is bad, sex is terrible, sex is not good. The only reason why they are celibate, why they are not having sex before they get married, is because they feel sex is bad, sex is terrible, I cannot do it, I must not do it. And it is difficult to get into marriage and change that mindset so easily. It's not so easy to get in, I mean, <laughs> and then you start saying sex is good all of a sudden. It doesn't work that way. There are a lot of people like that. The next thing they start feeling is virginismus. They start having pain during intercourse. They start struggling to have sex. They, they start shame, getting ashamed with their body. They can't get comfortable. Come on. We need a lot of... I mean, it's okay to be celibate. In fact, I am in the school of thought that you could... I mean, sex is worth waiting for. I am in that school of thought. I, I think I should talk about that topic. Why sex is worth waiting for. You might not like that, but I'm going to give you my strong point. A point, and it's not like I'm going to be quoting anything for you. I'm just going to give you my psychological point and you know reasons why I think sex should be worth waiting for. I've seen, and I think I'm going to stop here, really, so that I could take your question. I don't want to rush through your questions tonight. All right, so you know, but there are some. Um, this is. <laughs> this is a very, very big issue among the religious folks. People who are battling with sexless marriage, go and check their background. There are people whom, as, 
have somehow concluded in their brain that or in their head that sex is bad, sex is not good, and after by the time they get married, they want to start saying sex is good, they are finding it difficult to 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 you to flow into it. They can't get naked, they can't and you see, like I said, it is okay to be celibate, but please go for proper, proper and you know when people go for marriage counseling the, 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 i mean one of my clients was telling me like i was like did you go for counseling before you got married did you go she, ah you know the usual that we went now my church counseling and i was like okay did you guys discuss this ah we talked about it and the only thing they were telling me whenever your husband won't just give it to him just give it to him okay just give it to him <laughs> sex is beyond that come on people women are not the same whether you like it or not, there's nothing like just give it to him. Just give it to him. I mean, our mothers have, they used to have sex just for the man to, you know, come and the man will be fine. You know, but these days, women want to come. Women want to reach orgasm. They are not making love just because they want to have babies. So there's nothing like telling people before they get married, just give it to your husband. Just give it. At the end of the day, they won't be able to cope because it takes more than jo just giving it to her. Now, she wants to enjoy it. All right? Cultural and religious background, big issue. Big issue why people are, sleep are, are gradually sleeping into a sexless marriage because of, you know, the taboo of not talking about it, the taboo of uh, what, what, what I mean, it's bad, it's terrible, don't do it, uh, you cannot do it like this, you know? It's, it's huge, all right. Cultural and religious background can gradually push your marriage. Go and check the reason why your wife is not interested in sex. I used to have, I used to have a client. Every time you talk about certain things, you say, Nyama, Nyaga, Nyaga. I was like, ah, What's this? I mean. What you talk about, you know, I remember I mentioned something that, oh, sex is beautiful. You should get down and dirty. And then one of my clients wrote to me, ah, Totolu, eh, down and dirty. Is it good for children of God? <laughs> and uh, we're like, we're talking about your wife here. We're talking about your husband here. Why can't you get down and dirty for crying out loud? All right. Okay. I won't be able to take more than that. I've given you 10 points and I actually have 16 points. Okay, maybe on Thursday, I'll talk about the remaining 6 points. I really don't want to rush tonight. I want to take your comments. I want to take your opinion. I want to take your questions. If you are in a sexless marriage, tell me your experience. How are you coping? What is going on? Why Why are you in a sexless marriage? Why is it looking like your sex life? I mean, the only way you could satisfy yourself is to go outside and do it. Why is it looking like the only way to enjoy sex is to have a girlfriend or to have a boyfriend? Maybe after this topic, I'm going to be talking about cheating. I think I should do that. All right? So I'm going to be playing this song again. And by the time I come back, I will be taking your questions, your comments, your opinion on this particular topic. You don't want to move a muzzle. It is still intimate talk with Dr. Tolu. Well, that's always the shoulder to lean on. All right, you're welcome back to Intimate Talk with Dr. Tulu. Of course, you can lean on my shoulder tonight. Ask me all your questions. Tell me your comment. Tell me what you've been going through. And of course, you could actually walk into my Facebook page and send me your question. Of course, you could go to 99.3 Nigeria Info on Facebook and drop your comment. I hope I can read that. And of course, you could go to Intimate Talk with Tolu on Facebook. Go to Intimate Talk with Tolu. In, in fact, I, I think I'm going to take that now. Intimate Talk with Tolu on Facebook and uh, drop your questions in my inbox if you don't want to drop it on the wall. And of course, Intimate Talk with Tolu on Instagram. I'm going to be answering your question, all right? Okay, uh, Femi Arab. Hi, madam. Yeah, I'm here. Chisholm or IK. Hello, hello, Chisholm. John, I am Titulu. I need to seek your advice on something. Jenny Joseph, go ahead, ask me your question. Um, uh, uh, 
I man, I wish I can listen to your show on sexless marriage. I have serious problem with my sex life. Most time I just do it to make my husband happy and not because I felt like doing it sexually. My husband doesn't attract me. I don't really know what to do. I will be glad if you can help me. God bless you. All right. I think you, I mean, I don't think there should be any excuse for someone not to listen to Intimate Talk with Dr. Tolu. You could watch me live on Facebook. You could watch me on Wazobia Max 259. Even if you are not on DSTV, you could still watch. You could listen on radio. There's actually no excuse for you. All right. Okay. Before I go back to Facebook or Instagram, don't forget to see Intimate Talk with Tolu on Facebook or Instagram. Before I do that, let me pick your call. Start calling me now. Let me answer your calls for the next. I mean, I have time to do that now. Like I said, I don't want to rush. Call us on 0127709930127719930127729930 and 0127739930. This is Nigeria Info. We are listening. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, allow me to speak up a little bit. Can you hear me? Yes, you need to speak up a little bit. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Please, I'm saying go. Please, um, I'll ask you a question. Okay. Um, do you do matchmaking if I need somebody from abroad? I do matchmaking, but whether abroad or Nigeria, I might not be able to answer that on radio. All right. You could actually register in the website. Check through the website, intimatematchmaking.com. So, like I said, check through the website, intimatematchmaking.com. And, of course, that reminds me, yeah. In fact, I said I'm going to do this tonight. And there are some people I'm actually... Yeah, I think I want to do this tonight. I wrote them down. Some people, if you are interested in some of these people, you want to reach me and let's talk. Okay, there is Adele B, 31 years, master degree holder, based in Lagos, Nigeria, from Anambra State, friendly, down to earth, and simple, born again, Christian, but very outgoing. And love to travel around the world. She's into business and she's doing very well. If you're interested in Adele, be please reach me at the end of the show. And of course, there is there is Thai Bart, a only friendly and very respectful, devoted Muslim from Ogo State. Happy, loving single mother of one, currently living in Lagos, a BSc holder, 43 years old. And Thai Bat wants a God fearing, go getter, devoted Muslim man. Please reach me if you are interested. There is Amaka, 39 years old from Imo State. Amaka lives in Lekki. She's a Catholic and she has an international master's degree. Tribe is not an issue for, for Amaka, and whether you have kids before is not an issue. Okay, if you're interested in a marker, you want to reach me at the end of the show. I'm going to drop my contact. Of course, I still have more, but I think I will just take those three tonight. I want to pick my calls. Hello? Yeah, I lost that. All right, okay. You can call me now. I'm going to pick your calls. Yeah. Hello? Wow, now their calls are jamming. Hello? Hello, good evening. Good morning. Yeah, good morning, sorry, good morning. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, sorry, uh, those people that you have called just now, I mean, should I wait, uh, should I wait after the show? Yes, or, please you know? wait after the show. Please don't call me because of those people, I beg. <laughs> Let's talk about the topic. That's why I didn't want to do this all this while. I don't want you to turn this show to a matchmaking show, please. Hello? Hello? Yeah, good morning. Ah, good morning, ma. Yeah. Oh. 
Go ahead. Can you, can you info? Yeah. Uh, uh, please, man, I would like to contact you personally. Okay, I'll drop my contact at the end of the show. Guys, please talk to me about the topic of tonight. And if you have issues, please ask me your questions. Hello. 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 Good morning. Good morning. Um, I'm calling. I'm calling on the from um, the show on TV. Okay. Yeah. You're live. Yeah. Okay. Am I? Yeah, you are. I can hear you. Okay. Okay. Yeah, my name is Daddy. Okay. You're welcome. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm having issues with my woman. Okay. Okay. Um, this is that uh, she. Squirts a lot. She now. she squirts. Okay. Yes, anytime we make love, so it's an issue for me. Why is it uh, an issue? A lot of people are looking for it. Uh, no, no, too. It's 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 just too much. So I mean, what can you do about that? Uh, that that's what I'm calling. There is nothing you could do about that. Because as long as you, she's aroused, she's quiet. And I think you could, I don't, why, why don't you like it? L let me understand. Why don't you like it? Um, it's kind of messy. Too. It's messy, yeah. that's it. So I think the only solution for you is to manage it better. So how do I go about it? Get your towel, get your, get uh, props that could help you to manage it better. So you know when it's coming. This thing is coming, you are already prepared for it. So I think you should be happy because <laughs> a lot of people are looking for it. <laughs> yeah. So just just get prepared to manage it better when it's you can't stop it because that's whom she is just like uh, the only yeah, way to yeah, yeah. yeah. there is nothing you could do about it. Un unless you don't get her aroused. Okay. Yeah, so I think your only solution is, I mean, get used to it. If you are not comfortable with it, if you feel this is a problem, I mean, you could talk about it, and if it's a problem for you, you could let go, all right? But it, as long as you love this person, you want to be with this person, and it's something you could manage, get props. That's what I would call it, get props that will help you to manage that sin, and you'll be fine. Okay. All right. Hello. Uh, good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. Okay. Um, please, uh, number one, I don't know the content of the uh, program. Can you just um, enlighten me, please? <laughs> Sorry. I think you should listen on Thursday by 11 p.m. All right. Okay, but um, can we hang on to get the contact you just mentioned? Yes, yes, hang on. I'll drop my contact. When is the program ending? In By 12.30. Yes. Okay, that is okay. Thank All you. Right. You're welcome. Hello. Yeah, good morning. Good morning. Oh, I'm sorry. Good morning. It's fine. <laughs> um, I would like to remain on them more. Okay. Um, why is it that um, an issue like this that concerns men and women? find it difficult for women to contribute and they are the ones who like um, everything for us so, why? Right? I don't I don't get that. In this uh, uh, issue that we all are talking about now that yeah. we find men and women. Yeah. Why is it that women find it difficult to contribute for <laughs> It, it's, it's actually part of what we are talking about. Although women yeah, always yeah. find it difficult to call yeah, in. The thing about you guys is just like pretend, pretend, pretend. <laughs> You see, oh, it, no, no. It, you see, I've been listening to you. Hold mm, on, madam. Mm. I, 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 I will give a chance to your okay. opinion. I have been listening to you. And the same this issue we are talking about to make this really the house that each every time you come up with it, none of them will contribute or say something that you know others will learn or kind of you know help themselves things like that. But mm. that they will everything fall upon why. Mm. Okay. Men call this, men suffer this, but I don't know why mm -hmm. they are why now it's it, it, if you listen to the topic, you know, the last point I talked about, the point number ten talks about cultural 
and religious reasons why people are in a sexless marriage. And I can bet it with you that is the major reason why women are not calling it. Apart from the fact that a lot of women might actually be struggling with the line because it's so busy. But the fact is, women think they are they are more respected they are more when they are very uh when they are very they look decent and only to their husband you know that's the way our brain is wired so it, it's so difficult for women to start you know relaxing and talking about these things so easily it's not so easy you know it's it's all boils down to the way we were brought up and so women want to that that was why i made that statement that every man wants a woman in the street and i mean a lady in the street and a freak in the bedroom but women don't understand you've been pretending before you got married okay you've been only before you got married after marriage you are still this only sister who doesn't want to talk about sex with your husband for crying out loud when you guys go outside um, you see so you know the one that says mm. you know the one that says you know the Maybe to see her husband, you get closer to the person. Mm -hmm. But when she come outside, you say, well, who, who, who knows that to be the one? She'll be crazy <laughs> with the person, and when she gets to him, the man will be called. You get uh, down. Now, do you know why? Do you know why? Because that person is not. I don't know. The, the person is not her husband, and she feel. You know, and it's, you see, this is actually most of the time out of experience. Because most men, too, when the woman trying to, like, you know, get down and dirty, the man look at her and say, like, hey, where did you learn all this thing from? You are spoiled. You are this. It's common. It's just now that things are changing. So we men also want to pretend to their husband. I mean, there are men who feel like, I don't want to do this kind of style with my wife. It, it's going to look as if I'm treating her like a prostitute. There are a lot of African men that think like that. And it shows the state of mind that if a woman is trying to go extra mile, they might actually look at her like, what's wrong with this? I mean, where are you getting all this from? And then, because that is already registered in her brain, she didn't want to do anything. She wants to also remain, you know, the, but when she's going out, she's not owing the person any apology or explanation, you know? So I, I, I could give that to you as the reasons why women, you know, losing up. That's why I tell men, you, you all the, the only thing you are doing, when your wife sees her, is, her ex, there's no need for explanation. And a lot of, I mean, is 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 a reality on ground that a lot of women are cheating and the things they can't do with their husband when they see their ex, they do it because they don't need to explain. That's the truth. Thank you for calling. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm You're sure. welcome. <laughs> Actually, it's a very funny scenario, and that's the truth. That's the truth. All right. Hello. Hello, Master. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. And <laughs> very <enjoying> the show. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, there, is, there is this question that uh, I want to I want to ask. Okay. Yes, I want you to uh, tell me. My, you see, my wife, eh? Yeah. Whenever I'm making love to her, she, she doesn't come. Hmm. I don't know why. Hmm. And I keep on asking her, I don't know. She has never given me a reasonable explanation why. She will not. <laughs> there are lots of reasons why she might not be. Okay, it's possible. Let me just answer the question. One, she might not know why. Two, huh? she, she might. Hello, can you hear me? I'm here. Yeah, I, she might not I, know I, why. She, she might okay, not you, cut okay, I can cut the call. Okay, okay. So for a woman that is not enjoying sex, a lot of reasons. Okay, one, she might not know why herself. Secondly, she might know why and might know and might be pretending for you. And like because she knows, okay, this is the way I think if you if you if you do it this way, I'm gonna be fine. I'm gonna enjoy it. So she might be pretending for you because she doesn't want you to start asking questions, uh, where did you learn that and all that, which is very common. Three, she might not want to hurt your ego. Maybe you are not doing it the right way. And it's very, very, very common in this part of the world. You know, it is okay for you not to know how to make love to women. A lot of men here don't know how to make love to women. All right? If you don't know how to make love to a woman, it's okay. But if you don't know and you think you know, it's a problem. 
So it's possible that you don't even know how to make love to her. You are not doing what she wants. You are not doing what is going to make her come. And she can't tell you because she doesn't want to probably hurt or deflate your ego. So it could be any, there could be so many reasons. It could be, it could be um, as a result of, you know, like cultural background, like I've said. It could be as a result of maybe past experience. It could be as a result of uh, uh, maybe she's taking certain drugs that are affecting her libido. It could be frigidity. I think I should talk about frigidity on this show, you know. One of these days is something I should really talk about. So it could be different reasons. But the only way to come out of it is, number one, have a heart-to-heart discussion with her. Babe, let's talk about this. Do you know what is going on? And it's possible that the two of you are even clueless. You don't even know how to make love. All right? So if you can talk about it and you can't find a solution, then book an appointment with me. I will help you to solve the puzzle. All right? And I think this is going to be my last call. I th I'm sorry, uh, but I tried tonight. Really, I tried. Hello? Hello? Yeah, good morning. Hello, good morning. This is not speaking from Lekin. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, please, I just want to ask this question. Is it proper for a man to get married to a lady who is more older than him? Why not? Okay, okay. I'm going to cut your call so you could listen and I'm going to answer that question and that will be my last call for tonight. Sorry, guys. I can't take any more. All right. Okay. Now, if you are in America or in the UK, you are talking about a lady that is older than you. Who cares? Nobody cares. But because you are in Nigeria, it could be an issue. Now, why it's an issue is not because of you. Is because of the people around you, your aunties, especially aunties and mummies. Like, ah, is out of all this small, small, small girl, you didn't see anybody, somebody that is older than you. Now, how do you do it? Number one, and then I need a lot of you that are saying, ah, and she's older than me, will she be able to give birth to baby 60, 70 years old now? I mean, medical solutions have made things so easy that 60, 70 are giving birth. So, I don't see any reason why. You will be worried that maybe a woman of 35, 40, even though it might not be as smooth as somebody is like in 20s, but it's still not a problem if you love someone, all right? That said, I don't see any reason why you will not want to marry that person. If you genuinely love the person, one, if you are really sure of what you shared, and of course, you can't underestimate the power of the fact that no matter how we look at it, the, there is no marriage without a leader that is going to survive the man is still the head of the home is this woman ready to actually allow you to be the head of the home even though she's older than you do you have that understanding and of course are you going to be able to cope are you, do you love her is she the kind of woman you want that in, in future when you go out with your wife you'll be able to see people who are I mean, maybe you see your mates who marry some people who are people who are younger, ladies who are younger. Will you be able to be bold and be proud of your wife without getting um, uh, feeling bad? So, if you can answer all these questions, then you are cool. But the best thing to do for you is to keep your little secret to yourself if you want to survive. If your mom or your aunties hear about it, they're going to scatter you in Nigeria. So, as best as possible, if you answer all those questions that I've talked about, then. Keep your little secret to yourself and you will be good. All right. Thank you, guys. That's all I will be able to take on tonight's episode of Intimate Talk with Dr. Tolu. I rushed through it. I tried as much as possible, but the time is never enough. Thank you, guys, for joining me. Do not forget the dating party is going to be happening very, very soon. And to those of you who have been registering, more than 600 people already registered on, um, on Eventbrite. But do not forget that the dating party is going to hold any hour. We're going to do it this year. All right. And of course, for matchmaking, the people that I mentioned, for people who want to see me one on one, all you need to do is to reach me on 081 845 75377. To enjoy more of this, our Ogun Get videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.